I'm Concept Soup. This is a hammer, and this is the Asus Prime AP201 case, which we're checking out in today's review. We're going to go through what the case is, what it comes with, what it looks like, what you can fit in it, and of course, putting together a full build in the PC to see what kind of build you can put together in this case. It's going to be fun, so stick around. I bought the Asus Prime AP201 for the same reason I took your mother out for dinner last night because she's a freak. Now this case cost me 86 pounds when I got it. Let's take a look. So all the panels are toolless. So you just pull them off. There's no need for any screwdrivers to take most of the paneling off. It's a full mesh case, so there's no glass. It comes in black and white as well. Now in true fashion on the channel, we're gonna check out the less sexy side of the case first. So let's check out the cable management side. Controversial, I know, boring, maybe, but important because this is where a lot of the work is done. First thing you may notice is that the power supply is front mounted, which is rather unusual. That's how this case is so low profile. It's got a kind of low slung, but long look, like a saloon car. On the left, you can see the front panel connectors coming in and a large central reservation for cable management with some tie-down loops included. Also scattered around the case are these metal tie-down points, very handy for your cable routing. We also have room for a 2.5 inch drive here on the right, as well as some useful cutouts for cable routing. On the front panel, we have USB-C, two USB 3.2 Type-A ports, a power button, headphone and mic inputs. We can take the front mesh panel off and see that the power supply housing is held on by two screws on the bottom and two hooks on the top, which you lever out. This is so you can fit the power supply. Obviously, this is the shroud. This is how you're going to fit it. It will also allow you to move it up or down in the air, depending on your setup. For example, having it on the lowest notch means that you can fit a 360mm radiator in the top of the case, whereas having it on the highest notch means that you can fit in some more storage drives. You should mount the power supply with the fan facing the front of the case, even if the manual says otherwise, because this will reduce the noise of the power supply fan, since it will now have a clean source of fresh air rather than the hot mess going on in the rest of your system. Top panel, of course, also comes off so you can mount your fans or a liquid cooler. Now, onto the presentation side, the sexy side of the case, when your mum's wearing a nice little black cocktail dress. 3.5 inch hard drives can fit in the bottom of this case using the included screws. I think you can fit two or three in here. Alternatively, you can mount a couple of 120 millimeter fans for some additional airflow, which is what I did. It comes with a single 120 millimeter fan on the rear, which is three pin DC controlled, not PWM. The case holds a micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard, but no others, so you can't fit a standard ATX board in this. It has to be micro or mini ITX. Bags of room above the motherboard tray for your liquid cooler and cable routing, which is nice to see. To fit the power supply, you need to take off this faceplate using the screws, and of course, don't forget to put it back on once you're done with your build. You definitely want to use a semi-modular or modular power supply with this case, else the cable bulk is going to be very difficult to manage. In that same vein, I would not recommend using any custom sleeve cable extensions, just not enough room to manage the cables. First impressions though of this case, it's good. I feel like if you want this style of case, you're getting a good manifestation of it. It's not one for the RGB mad, you know, gamer vibe thing, but for a sophisticated person that wants something sleek, and I think it's very aesthetic, it's got an Apple Mac vibe about it, with a low slung look, due to the layout and the maximum MATX size, and it does fit a good variety of hardware. Now here are the specs of the case if you care about that. The motherboard support is micro ATX and mini ITX. Our drive support is up to three three and a half inch drives and one two and a half inch drive. Those three and a half inch bays, they can be used for two and a half as well, so they're kind of hybrid bays. Top cooling support, we've got 240, 280, and 360 millimeter radiators on the top, depending on the power supply position or you can put 320 or 240 millimeter fans. Though it's not technically listed on the website, you can put two 120 millimeter fans on the bottom of the case with no problems at all. The maximum CPU cooler height is 170 millimeters. I think that accommodates pretty much all tower coolers out there. The maximum video card length is 338 millimeters. Traditionally, that wouldn't be a problem, but with cards getting a lot bigger now, it's something you're gonna to want to check. The case dimensions officially are 
205 by 350 by 460 millimeters with a weight of 5.8 kilograms. No one really ever cares about that, but it's worth saying. Now, it is time to build it up. Let's whiz through that, then see the performance after. There'll be a parts list on the screen in just a sec. Enjoy. So there you go, you've seen it all. You've seen it all. And Prime 95 showing temperatures of 75 degrees maximum on this Ryzen 5 part, which I'd say is about par for the course. That seems to be what they all land at when doing this kind of test. The graphics card hits 76 degrees in this test, but I think that's more a reflection on this palette model that we used rather than any shortcoming of the case. It actually had plenty of airflow. But that said, 76 degrees is still well below thermal throttling territory. Now, gaming-wise, it's a clean sweep of great performance. I don't think the case really makes any difference to these numbers. They're about on par with other systems of this spec, and that's true of most builds. Unless you buy a horrific glass-fronted case with no airflow at all, the difference between cases will not really affect the gaming performance much, so it's a matter of preference. I'd say don't get too bogged down with just trying to find the ultimate peak airflow case, looking at loads of graphs of different case testing. You just want to get the one that you're going to be proud to have on your desk, and one that has a decent amount of airflow and you will be absolutely fine. Obviously you want a case that's going to fit the components that you want as well. But what did I think of the case personally, the build process, etc? Now I think this is a very unique case, very sleek understated and for that type of buyer it's a fantastic choice and the performance is just fine. I like being able to move the power supply shroud around depending on your needs, not that I would particularly need that many three and a half inch drives myself. That said, I prefer a standard ATX mid tower to these kind of micro ATX cases just for ease of upgrading in the future and keeping your options open. So overall, if you want this professional look, it's a good choice. If you're not bothered about that, or you prefer a more RGB gamer vibe, there are other more suitable options out there. Is it good value for money? £86 is a fair whack for a case. We're in upper mid-range territory here. We recently reviewed the Cooler Master TD500 mesh, and it's about the same money. And I feel with the Cooler Master, you're getting better design, better looks, and of course you're getting three RGB fans included, plus all the benefits of having a regular ATX size chassis. But enough from me. Over to you, dear viewer. What did you think of this case? Would you buy it? And what would you like me to review next? Leave your comments below. Enjoy the sunshine and peace. And here's a hammer as well. 
just in case you forgot what a hammer was. Bye-bye.